sponsors of Harvest Radio. It's time now for the Town Talker with Reverend Zechariah A. Jackson. Reverend Jackson is founding pastor of the Church of What's Happening Now, located in Plainfield, New Jersey. And now, the Town Talker, Reverend Zechariah Jackson. You know, it's such a beautiful introduction, and I, you know, I like it. It motivates me when I hear the church of what's happening now, Town Talker. And we today are actually here to do what's happening now, you see. And normally, I, um, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I kind of cut prayer down a little bit because that, you know, the topics have been so long. And so, you know, I'm trying to get every inch because, you know, the airtime costs money. But today, I think that we just going to go on to that old spiritual prayer that I wrote. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord of hosts, give us strength to walk through the valley of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. To come within your equal rim of balance and order despite our deficiencies. Yes. Yea, Lord, we are lost people, but through your mercy and grace, you found us, guided us, and have directed our path. But still, we have not followed your ways with the whole heart, Lord, and have fell ourselves. Right now, Father, we pray that you would forgive us of our shortcomings as we have been conditioned to follow man and not you with a whole heart, Lord, with a whole heart, Lord, with a whole and complete heart open to you. We pray that we meet under different circumstances, putting you first, Father, in all that we do. Yes. In our Lord and Savior name, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Again, Thank this right here is the Reverend Zachariah A. Jackson and uh, one of my colleague Reverend, brother in this fight, just walked in. Um, brother Reverend Alexander Branch, he just come on in. You got to go get, go get a chair. <laughs> okay, we're going to let everybody, we have uh, everybody introduce themselves. Uh, I'm going to first start with, okay, uh, someone that, that reminds me that she's running for office in November as a, 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 a councilwoman at large yes. against Annie McWilliams, who defeated uh, uh, Harold Gibson. Yes. So the battle... It's not over yet. Right. So go ahead and introduce <coughs> yourself. And we, we, today we're going to talk about uh, the Millenberg situation. Right? Well, today uh, is a day that no one who was in that room will ever forget. They talk about where were you when you heard that Kennedy was shot. And we're all going to be knowing that we were in that room when they basically tried to pass a death sentence at Millenberg Hospital. And I say, try because they did leave the door open. Now it's just up to us not to go away, fade away, and give up. So even though I, Deborah Dow, am a candidate for office, that's not who I am right now. Okay. I'm a citizen All right. who's trying to use every resource I have, you know, to work with other citizens to try to save a resource we all so desperately need. And these sisters in the struggle, most of them didn't even know I was running for office. <coughs> I haven't been talking about that at all. That's, 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 that's down the line. Right now, we're on a battlefront that has a lot to do with, with political leadership. Sure. But we got to work with what we've got right now. Well, you know, I always say, as I said before we started the show today, that um, <coughs> the struggle and the fight that we have definitely got to go after the conductor of evil. He's everywhere. He can create all kind of havoc, even in the gasoline or water. He won't even build the right kind of dams. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 the uh, hot land is flooding out. Yes, yes. And, and they're talking about the rise of food. But God hit me today on my sermon that I preach for, for, for this Sunday. I preach it at the job. and It's going to be uh, uh, by tape. He said, you know, if man would just grow up, Mm. And we would have one world store. Mm -hmm. We got a world bank. Why not a world store? Yes. You know what I mean? So that means that the hot land, you know, is underwater. Then we won't be affected economically in our pockets because it's one world store. And that means all the world sell and deal through that store. That's true. Oh, we're going to pray for a good day. Go ahead, sister. Would you introduce yourself? My name is Rebecca Kelly. 
her sister Deborah Dow said, sitting in that room is like when the Kennedy got shot. I am lost. I'm still lost. Sister, I want you to explain to the listening audience what room are you guys talking about? Sitting in the um, Holiday Inn. <clears throat> we went to the final hearing for Muhlenberg Hospital. A lot of people, over a thousand, came to the first two sure. at the high school. So this one was in East Windsor, where they have a lot of these. So we took a bus down there, and we saw they had a quorum, which okay. is enough to make an official meeting. And they took an hour of testimony from the community. They let us speak three minutes each. And then they let Solaris speak for ten minutes. Of course. Then they questioned <laughs> Solaris. Uh, we didn't question Solaris. Sure. They but, said but, they but, but. were questioning them on our behalf sure. okay. and on our concerns. <laughs> and then they told us that one by one they all voted to close Muhlenberg. One by one. They, they made some pretty statements, some of them, and they even said instead of keeping the license open for two years, maybe three. Maybe, but they don't have to give us that. She could still say just two. But, but if they're going to have the emergency room to, for five, keep the license for five. Sure. You know, as long as, you know, let, let's give us time to build. Because I believe we've got grant writers in this town and from other towns. Sure. And I believe we should convene a meeting of write, grant writers. Well, that right there, son, I want you to pass the mic back to Sister Kelly because she seemed to be so disturbed, walked in here today. <laughs> upset and everything and I'm trying to hook up everything and trying to get line feeds all the way into Illinois and everything and I'm trying to make sure that we can be heard by uh, 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 internet and when she came in with, a, with one of them attitudes, she just sat down. So go ahead, Sister, express yourself. Um, based on what Sister Dow said a while ago is that um, it's like a bullet hit through the ear. I don't know how to have a bullet or a grenade, which one it was, but it struck me. I find it very, very offensive that some, that our politicians on a whole, they are the ones that are um, rubber stamping the hospitals in the urban development areas. This is essential hospital. No matter what we said, no matter what we did, as she said, it's going to be closed and they did what they had to do. We have pointed out the lives. There are going to be a lot of lost lives. We're talking about children getting hurt on the, on the ball field, and 900 mothers have no place to lay and give birth. How are they going to survive? $50 one way, $100 round <coughs> trip to Trinitas? I don't think so. My statement, I, I spoke there, and because the simple reason is that Plainfield is a very tight, is a knit tight community. We stand together on what we believe. That is a worthy cause. Anything be, anything supposed to be, be kept is worthwhile fighting for. But this is a hospital that has so much features about it and it has done so many good things as far as the angioplasty and all this stuff that they can have to offer. It has been there 131 years and for someone to come and become rich out of it. And I said rich, yes, because when I heard about the equity, the equity is gone. For 131 years, the equity in Muhlenberg is, has been taken because, you know, Solaris has um, what's it, uh, uh, nursing homes, group homes, or whatever kind of homes he has over so there. So they divert, they divert the money other other places from actually Millenberg here in Plainfield, which was should have been the foundation of the whole movement, uh, of the whole business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, he doesn't matter. He don't care no matter what, you know, as, as the, as the, um, as one of the commentators says there, she says, it has been planned that we have to close Muhlenberg no matter what because they had expenses and they don't have the resource to keep it open. You know, but think about it. If it was in their community that this happened, I don't think they would have closed these in other communities, but they target 
the urban neighborhoods. Sure they do. Mm -hmm. And I've, this is my concern. Why? Because it's a racial motivated thing. And, and they feel that they can get away with it. And they can get away with it and nothing is being asked about it. You know, who cares? You know, let them drop dead. This is the whole regime. I mean, it, it just takes me down. It really, 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 really took a well, lot to sit there and listen to this today. It seems like the spirit of evil is on the rise again, and, and, and we're going to talk about that again. Uh, I want to go to a sister that work. You work at the hospital. Yes, I do. Now, uh, Val, Val it is, right? Vera. Vera. Vera work at the hospital. How many years have you been at the hospital, Vera? 29 years. She, so she's been here, been at the hospital 29 years. Now, what? Uh, how do you feel? I feel like my Millenberg is a pillow of plain field. Introduce your, yourself. Uh, my name is Vera Harrow. I feel like Millenberg is a pillow of plain field. We need a hospital like I told you that. We need a, it's too many schools. Too many daycares in Plainfield for us not to have a hospital. The salad like emergency room will not do. Salad like emergency room is just for cuts and straights. If you're having a heart attack or a stroke or something, they saying they're having the shallow, but I don't believe it. They didn't have the shallow when they closed the baby floor up. They told a lot of lies and they seemed like they got away with it. And God is not pleased. You might got away, but just like I want all y'all to know one day I have judgment day. Everybody gonna be judged. Y'all wrong. You did wrong. Millerberg was done wrong from day one. I'm so upset. I can't barely talk. Cause we need our hospital. And it's like nobody don't care. And y'all, plenty gonna be affected when you really go there. When something happened in their family stuff. And I think Solaris and the state, anybody lose their life, Solaris and the state should be able to be sued. Cause they could, they could have been, I said the word, prevented this. This does not have to happen. Somebody could have stopped this. <clears throat> could have stopped this. Vera, after um, 29 years of service, uh, almost 30 years, um, what is your next move? What, what, what Have they offered you anything? No, I wasn't off. I, no. <laughs> I wasn't off anything. I've been so busy fighting. <laughs> Uh, uh, my, uh, my service pay, they all, I've been there 29 years for service pay to offer me three, 12 weeks of service pay. And number one, that's wrong. 29 years, I deserve more than three months of service pay. That ain't right either. So another no, injustice. Another one. No um, uh, trying to get you in another hospital or anything like that? Or no. Just, mm -hmm. just, this is it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people left on their own. A lot of people got, like, a lot of people were on their own, got jobs everywhere else. Okay. Different hospitals and stuff. Solaris, too, I mean, uh, JFK Hospital. Some of our people are going up there. Okay. But see, I don't need no part-time job. I need a full-time job. I have to pay my bills. Well, let me ask you this right here. Uh, for another venue for the Talent Talker show, perhaps next month, because we're so close at the next month, mm -hmm. can you, if you can uh, get some of the people that's in the same condition you're in, mm -hmm. and perhaps if we can just have a form, for you guys, because I mean, after the servants pay, I believe that you guys would be uh, uh, awarded like to um, uh, what do you call it, the unemployment. Yeah, unemployment. Like uh -huh. Yeah. So the idea is that is there any way that maybe you can get a few people together that bring them up to the radio station, just you know, to. I'll try. Okay. I'll try. All right. I'll All right. Try. We're gonna um, uh, go to um, Reverend Branch. Good afternoon, and let the church say amen. Amen. Well, this is truly a dark day. The vote approved was approved to um, for the recommendation of the closing of Millbrook Hospital, but leave the emergency open for two years, um, leaving an option for license for the next two years if they can find someone to operate the hospital. As you know, um, being a legal liaison for the Plainfoot chapter of the NAACP, I also spoke with James Harris, the state president of the NAACP, at uh, length this afternoon. The NAACP feels that it's an unsatisfactory solution um, for five reasons. Number one, um, 
it does not provide comprehensive medical care for people in the Plainfoot area. Number two.